presentation at 3 o'clock at 4, and then the uh, service will be at 4. So just be in prayer for them. And then uh, continue to pray for our shut ins, Dan Priscilla, and, and pray for uh, Ellen and Don. And Don just seems to progress and be a little worse as time goes on. Pray for continue to pray for my dad's uncle. He is, he had a good day yesterday. He was, uh, my dad got a picture of him. He was sitting up. Looked like he was doing a little better, but he was just weak, extremely weak. So I just pray for him. Still trying to, still trying to battle with the numbers, right? So just, uh, I want to read one of our missionary prayer letters real quick. I don't know how much I will read of it. It is quite lengthy. Uh, but this is from the Morales family in Israel. I said, a, uh, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver, Proverbs 25 to 11. This update will be primarily a series of stories connected with pictures from our work over the past month. Uh, as foreign ambassadors go, I am horrible about taking pictures, uh, preferring to be in the moment and not in, in bag and tag mode. Uh, fortunately for you all, I have had good people traveling with me who say, Chris, let's get a picture. Or simply do so without my knowledge. That would have to be my wife. Uh, she does it all. But says, I hope these I hope these pictures uh, that have resulted uh, from a word fitly spoken will encourage you. Says I went uh, to the hill of, of Moriah. Uh, there is 701 there, which is just outside of our town, uh, to visit a small group of soldiers guarding some sensitive equipment at the top. I met Guy, the other side of the banner uh, from yours truly, it's in the picture. Uh, but uh, it says, who, uh, who upon hearing my American accent uh, uh, muscling through my Hebrew, uh, words began speaking in just a in just as strong an American accent. It turns out that his mother is from New York, and he spent much uh, much time in the U.S. He is a uh, reservist in the uh, paratroopers brigade. <clears throat> but while most of his buddies are in Gaza fighting, he's commanding a small group on this sleepy hilltop. And he was noticeably not happy with this uh, arrangement. Uh, he was thankful for the food and toiletries that uh, that we supplied them. Uh, the hill on the left side, left hand side of the picture is Mount Tabor, so you can see there's in the, in the picture there. Uh, one of the one of our focus areas has been helping the security team assigned to our town. Um, at Fula is the name of the town. I believe I'm right. Whether it is whether it was jackets. Safe, uh, safeties uh, for their rifles or a barbecue, we established a great relationship with these men. The commander, Amir, um, came to my house to present a letter of appreciation. Everyone asked why we do what we do. In this case, uh, they are literally protecting my family and my children to walk to school. More importantly, every unit gets a letter explaining uh, uh, explaining from the scriptures why people like you and I are supporting them. The beautiful part, they get it, many of them, uh, uh, for the, the first time, uh, to explain that to an Israeli that genuine Christian support of Israel isn't based upon receiving some uh, reciprocal uh, Abrahamic blessing alone, nor is it due to any belief that doing so will cause the Almighty to, to move one second faster towards the next phase of his sovereign plan is impactful. These men and women uh, now know that we do so out of authentic love uh, for, the, for the God of Israel and to and be in obedience to the New Testament, which is perhaps the biggest shock uh, of all to them. An often neglected part of this country is uh, in the midst of threats from the south in Gaza and the north in Lebanon is, is Syria. We, we have the opportunity to deliver vests with ceramic plates and helmets to the security team responsible for protecting communities along the Syrian Jordanian borders in the southern uh, Golan Heights. These security teams are made up of members of the communities themselves 
they are often left to themselves to procure equipment. Uh, we met uh, we met the head of, uh, of the team, uh, Shen. I think is how his name is pronounced. C H E N Shen. And he uh, he took us to the overlook just outside of the community. He showed us the, the exact place where Syria, Jordan, and Israel meet. Uh, we met a soldier recently taken from the front line in order to watch this post uh, and, a, and a tank uh, element nearby. And there was also a UN station doing absolutely nothing, which happens to be uh, what they are profitable for, yeah, profitable for, uh, but I digress. Uh, uh, Shen told us about the many security incidents uh, there that never make the news. He and I really hit it off. And we have been invited to uh, to a <coughs> a Shabbat meal at his house. Uh, please pray for this open door. Uh, we were blessed by a surprise visit from from Brother Richard Mayer, uh, servant in Ukraine, who brought a uh, brought a father son duo back to serve the Lord in Jewish communities. Around the world, we took advantage of Brother Mayer's uh, Russian uh, capabilities and his men's desire to get Hebrew, Russian New testaments to uh, to places of need, and took them to visit our our contacts in Ashkelon, uh, this southern city, just a few miles from the northern uh, Gaza Strip, has been the most provocative city in Israel. Uh, you. Uh, he guard a, a fellow servant who immigrated as a Jewish believer in Christ bring Jesus from Ukraine. He has faithfully uh, has been faithfully serving over 500 families uh, who remained in Ashkelon during the war. His team prepares hot meals and prays for the people who, who could not or would not evacuate. When the mayor and the crew presented him with one of the New Testaments, which, is, which excited him. Uh, he asked if we could get more, and these dear brothers offloaded a suitcase of these New Testaments to give to people that they help in the city. Uh, the pictures show uh, shows their brethren, it's one of the paragraph, shows their brethren with some of the men that gladly received the word of God. Furthermore, Edward, I guess it's not pronounced Edward, uh, showed us an audio Bible play, uh, player, uh, he says, uh, has been helpful for those who can't or read. I recognize, uh, recognize the player as one manufactured by a ministry in Israel who I have uh, a direct contact with. I asked him if he, uh, if he could use more players, uh, to which he eagerly said yes. I made a trip to the factory where the players were produced and they just happened to be finishing a project with Ukrainian auto, uh, audio Bibles and additionally teachings and devotions on, on dealing with traumatic experiences. Um, uh, my contact has, has 800 of these players um, but had no one that can do directly in Ukraine or Israel he could distribute, distribute them to. Of course, the Lord knew all of this from the beginning. So now uh, we will be uh, we will be claiming it. Uh, sorry. Now we will be getting a uh, a few hundred of these players for Ash uh, Ashkelon, with the rest going to Ukraine. And all of this was spurred by uh, this surprise visit. So if you would continue to pray for the Morales family, there is a whole lot more than two pages of that letter. Uh, but uh, just be in prayer for the Morales family. It sounds like the Lord is opening doors continually. And I just pray that they are able to continue to walk through the door and the Lord gives supplies where needed so they can get the word of God out. <clears throat> and it sounds like those uh, <clears throat> like those audio players uh, God did make just for them for the sound. Uh -huh. So, one blessing that is. So you be a prayer for the Morales my, my family and continue to pray for the conflict. You don't hear a whole lot about it no more, uh, but uh, just be in continual prayer for the conflict going on in Israel, Ukraine, Russia, <coughs> and pray that, uh, pray that the Lord uh, opens doors for the Morales family and the to be able to be a conflict.
Let's go over to our prayer. Ask you for blessing on the service. And then we'll be leading to the message of the rest of the evening. Brother Ben, would you open us up in a word for everything? Well, thank you for the Missionaries, first drive, people, as all the missionaries, and people, All right, draw the name, please. We'll go to page 296. 296. <laughs> Surgery. And 
so I will bring it to the notes. But uh, just be in prayer about whether or not you might be able to attend that meeting. And it's always a good time. I've been multiple times uh, with groups in my church. So if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me, and I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, but we'll have a side of the sheet now. First Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start reading from verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 11. It says this, But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one know not. Heavenly Fathers, we come to the grace and thank you for another opportunity we have to be in the house. Lord, I pray that you would speak through the message tonight. Lord, I pray that you would be yourself. I pray that you would stand on high behind your cross. Lord, I pray that tonight you would receive an education from the Lord. Lord, it helps to understand uh, what healing or what the church discipline actually is and what we need to take care of and how to take care of it properly as a church and a unit. We love you. So the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter number 5 is on the subject of church discipline. That's, that's really the only thing it talks about. It talks about getting things out of the church, getting some things that are uh, that, that had infiltrated the church there at Corinth that they were proud of. Uh, my grandpa and I were having a conversation about a church that we had dealings with throughout the years and uh, and how the pastor has completely turned, and people are leaving like, like, like mad. And there are some things that, if the church is not careful, we will creep in. And sometimes it'll creep in, and by the time you notice it, or by the time you begin to deal with it, it's almost too late. Yeah. And it can extremely hurt the testimony of the church. Or it can, or it can not only not only extremely hurt the testimony of the church, but it can actually close the doors of the church mm -hmm. and not dealt with properly. Uh, I know of a couple of churches right now that are literally closed down for uh, that have closed down because of sin that not in the church or the dealt with. And so, as as we looked at last week. There was a man, a, a professing Christian, a member of this of this particular Corinthian church, who was immorally involved with his stepmother. Mm -hmm. it, listen, if it wasn't in the Bible, I wouldn't believe it. You know, but it, it is. It's nasty, but it happens. And it's the world that we live in today. You look at verse number one, it says, it is reported commonly, meaning I hear about it all the time, yeah. that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as, as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Mm -hmm. You. I would go and say I'm going to you on that one. But Paul is trying as a missionary, Paul is trying to to refocus the church, he's trying to uh, he's trying to tell them, listen, there are some things going on in your congregation that if you're not careful, not only is it going to destroy your testimony, it's going to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And if the devil has his way about it, he will shut the doors of the church. Right. He will. Uh, he would love nothing better than to have a church's testimony ruined in a community because of an issue that the pastor had. A uh, young lady I worked uh, at work at the comp shop. We worked uh, together this morning. She is a <clears throat> she's a member of uh, Rivers Crossing, and she works in the children's department. And we we were having a conversation. And I think from previous conversations we have had, she started to ask a few questions that she had never really paid attention to until her and I had a conversation. <laughs> And she said, you know what I have noticed? Just, she's only 43. She said, I have noticed really over the last few months the number of pastors that are involved in sin 
that the church is not allowed to be involved in society that's why he lives. Right, uh, he's he's the pastor. He's he's in control. There's really nothing we can do about it. Not yeah. the scripture. Listen, if you're going to be a pastor leading a church, there are some pretty specific rules and guidelines that God has yeah. spelled out in His Word. One of those is blameless. Listen, if there is an accusation that comes up against me as a pastor, the best thing for me to do is to step down for a few minutes, have somebody go a little bit while I take care of that, and then step back in. Because if I'm found to blame, and I'm still standing behind a little bit, mm -hmm. you can imagine the detriment that's going to happen to the church. I'm not saying that's ever going to happen, but listen, there's cases where it could. It happens. Right. Uh, I had a conversation with her today along that same line of, you know, I, I do my absolute best never to have a private conversation with them. No. If they call me, it's on speaker in front of her. That way she is my good woman. If I counsel with a, with a lady, mm. it's always with my wife. Amen. If I counsel with a couple, guess what? She knows that. She has just a big impact on my ministry. Mm -hmm. I do. And so we had that conversation because one of the one of the things she talked about was affairs that pastors are in, and, and yet it just goes unchecked. Mm -hmm. And and I told her, I said, I do my absolute best and never to have a private conversation with another woman in my office, on the phone. Um, and I do have conversations with, with ladies in our church, but my wife is always in the text group. She's always reacting. She's always part of it. Because I don't want there to be any, uh, any accusation coming against me and my wife or the church. Man. Uh, Miss Tammy cleans on Thursday. And a lot of times, when I leave work, I'll come by here, spend some time, do some things. But if her car's here, I, I just keep on going. It's not that I don't trust any. I mean, for Pete's sake, I grew up with her voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tony and I are the same age. Same uh, what's that? She's, she's, old. Old. she's old, is that what it is? I'm not going to say yeah, it. I didn't put out the I'm going to say it. Tammy, you're old enough to be my mom. Well, but, you know, uh, at the same time, <laughs> I, I do my absolute <laughs> best not to give attention to any type. Of accusation. Mm -hmm. And that's to protect myself and to protect everybody within the church. Right. And so Paul is trying to get through to the Corinthian church here. Listen, there are some things happening in your church that if, if they go unchecked and they continue, you're going to not only ruin the testimony of your church, but you are not going to be able to be an active witness within the community that God has placed you in. Mm -hmm. Because Nobody is going to want to go to a church where there is active fornication going on yeah. amongst the leadership mm -hmm. of a church. And if they do, something's messed up in their head too. Sadly, this particular church was, was proud or puffed up. There in, in verse number two, it says, And, and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned than ye that have done this deed. Might be taken away from among you. In verse number six, we're going down there. It says, "Your glory is not good." Now uh, know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth a whole lump? Yeah. Listen, they were glorying mm -hmm. that they were so tolerant. You could use a word of, I guess, hip about <coughs> sin. When they should have been mourning about it and dealing with it. Listen, when there is sin in a church, it is nothing to be happy about. Um, at all. It is not something to stick your chest out. Yeah, you know, we got this going on in our church. However, it happens a lot. Um, Paul tells them really quite specifically to put that man out of the church. Look at verse number 13. Right. It says, but them that are without God judgeth. 
Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. God made the rule, not me. Listen, if you've ever sinned going on in somebody's life and you have gone to them multiple times and you have tried to do things rightly in an order of yeah. the scripture, if they still continue in the sins they are in with no repentance, it's time for you to Right. Because that little bit of leaven, you have not leaven at the whole lump. Listen, it can, it can creep in and other things can start to happen if you don't deal with the problem at hand. And so not only did he say, did he say to put them out of the church at verse 11, which we read there, he tells them not even to eat with them. With, with such, there at the end of the verse, <coughs> with such and one, no, not to eat. Yeah. He said, don't fellowship with them. Don't fellowship with them. Listen, Christ spent a lot of time in his earthly ministry, you find where he fellowshiped a lot around the table. He did. He spent time teaching his disciples around the table. He spent <coughs> he spent time with other believers around the table, building relationships with them and, and teaching what he was what he was going to do. And there were some things that they, of course, didn't understand. And, and still today, there's some things that we don't quite understand. But right. he was teaching them what he was trying to do, or what he was going to do. Listen, there's a lot to be said about fellowship around the table with the people of God. I enjoy having dinners. I do. I enjoy when we get to sit around the table and just and just share a meal and conversate over random things, whether it's things going on in the church or things we've seen God do in our lives, or or whether it's just a random conversation, just to just to kind of get to know each other a little bit. My wife, she does ladies. Uh, when she does ladies' fellowship, she always likes to play some type of a game where she'll ask questions and everybody doesn't put a name on it, but you can write down something about yourself that nobody knows, pass the papers around and everything, and then they'll start reading it. It doesn't have to be anything major, but listen, it helps us understand each other. It helps us fellowship a little bit better if we know who we're serving with. It's important to know how each other is able to serve. And so the Apostle Paul expands on, on this uh, in verse 11 there about not eating with them at the table, but there's a list six of six immoral sins which require church discipline. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to make it through one of them. Number one, first and foremost, we've already talked about it a little bit. That's fornication. Fornication <laughs> is a Greek word uh, from uh, that is known as pornos, or the word pornea, from which our English word pornography comes from. And so it's a very general word which includes all manner of immoral or sexual sins. That's a word that is not used by boys today. But I think it can be said. I'm not trying to be nasty. But it's a word that needs to be discussed. It's a word that we need to have conversations with other kids. Yeah. It's not my job to do that. It's the parent's job to do that. Okay? I can give you scripture, I can give you the word of God. I can speak about it in a broad sense of the term up here. So when it comes to more detailed things, parents, yeah. we ought to take the initiative to talk to our kids about this and be open with them about it. Now, I understand depending on their age, you, you, you tend to shy away from certain things, and I get that too. Uh, you know, we've had questions asked by all three of our kids, and we've had to We've had to vary our answers depending on their capability of understanding and, and the terminology used yeah. to continue to keep it innocent at the same time. So understanding and knowing how to do that is a big is a big thing. But according to scripture, sexual relations belong exclusively to married people. Yeah. Exclusively. And so to a husband who is a man, uh, 
A husband, you ever said, who is a man and a wife who is a woman? In the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them male and female. Yeah. Okay? That one's spelled out in scripture. There doesn't need to be an argument about that one. There's a little yeah. right to argue about it. So any and all immoral sin contact between people who are not married to each other is the sin of fornication. Yeah. And so that uh, the words uh, the words used in Acts chapter 15, verse 20, Christians are commanded to abstain. Go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. I'm going to pull it out here in just a minute. We completely we have uh, not been able to go to the gym like normal. However, I have a need to. Uh, I got up this morning and I, I texted my wife when I got to work. I said that I have worked out pretty hard in the gym, but I can feel every muscle be right now. <laughs> mm. The gym owner even texted us. Or text me today and he said, Hey, are you okay? I haven't seen you in a week and a half or so. I told him what's going on. I said, I've been working with the muscles that I've been building at the gym. And he's like, Oh, dude, because I understand. He said, But uh, he said, what? I wanted to let you know we miss you. But, anyways, Acts chapter 15, verse number 20 says, But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication. And from things, uh, uh, <clears throat> from things strangled and from blood. Listen, we are to abstain in Acts chapter number 21. Go there real quick. Acts chapter number 21, verse number 25. <clears throat> this is weird to keep ourselves, keep the thing ourselves, the Christian. Verse number 25 of Acts 21. It says, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangles, or from strangled, and, and from fornication. Listen, we're to keep ourselves right with God. It, it's pretty easy to read that in Scripture. It, it shouldn't be this big old deal. Well, there is some gray area here, and God doesn't get real specific. Yeah, He does. Right. There is no gray area. It is either you are involved in sin or you're not. That's pretty plain. I mean, that's what I see. Go, to, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter six, verse thirteen. <clears throat> and really, we're, we're looking at the latter half of the verse, the whole thing, the whole verse. It says the meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Uh, look down in verse number 18, same chapter. <clears throat> it says this, it says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that commanded and that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Listen, there is something unique and profound about this particular sin. All rights. That the fornicator is sinning against his own body. Not just, not just against the church, not just against God, but he is sinning against his own body. And that's not what God intended us to do. We were intended to have fellowship and relationship with God. And if there is sin in our life, that relationship cannot be proper. Just like if there was, if there was something in my life between me and my wife, that relationship there could not be proper. If I met something like this going on, we would struggle. We would have issues. Uh, that was another conversation I had with a young lady at the 
talk shop, she'd get married and she she's all excited. And she said, We she said we're we're enjoying the planning process of <coughs> Of the wedding, she said we weren't going to do a weren't going to do a honeymoon. However, through the counsel of our pastor, he said you need to do that. You need that week that you're going to be waiting for them to do it. And so they decided just to go to Pensacola. And she said we we never went to be there by ourselves, which is a really a refreshing thought because you don't hear much about that today. Yeah. She said we we've always either had somebody with us or out in public. He doesn't come to my apartment. I don't know to be his because he's on the back of the collar. Uh, she said, but especially right now, she said, when we meet up, it's either in my family's house, his family's house, or in a public setting, a coffee shop, or somewhere where there's accountability. And she said, and she said, I, I really, really want to keep my testimony right. from down to the way. And I it almost brought a tear to my eye because you don't, again, you don't hear about that a whole lot. I said, oh, that's fantastic. I'm glad you're doing that. But she said, she said, my, I've got friends that I've grown up with that, you know, they go on church together and they by themselves. And, you know, once they're 18, 19, 20 years old out of the house, they do whatever. And anymore, they don't even have to be out of the house. If they're 18, graduated from high school, I know of a young lady that, her parents are letting her go to Austin Hills with her boyfriend. Just the two of them. Didn't even know you could rent a hotel anymore at that at that stage. I mean they're not even in their 20s yet. Neither one of them is 21. I think she's 19, I think he just turned 20. But listen, if we're going to keep a right testimony in front of others. You know what's going to have to happen? We're going to have to flee temptation. We're going to have to flee anything that would bring, that would bring a accusation such as in yeah. moral sin on our life. It, it, you know, it, it does internal destruction for a person like no other sin. Because, because, a, because intimacy, sexual intimacy, is the deepest united of two persons in scripture. I'm not trying to be messy. I hope I don't know what that guy is. But this needs to be talked about. It needs to be talked on. It's misuse and it corrupts on the deepest level to the child of God. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I have to one. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse number 2. Says this, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Listen, so we're living in a time when a lot of 20 somethings are extending their adolescence into their 20s and even their 30s, and by doing that, they are much more vulnerable to the most sin. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I say this? People need to grow up. People need to grow up. Listen, we're, we're changing some things in our bylaws because in our bylaws, the 12 year old can vote. I don't trust any 12 year olds in this session right now. Not even my own daughters. She's not 12, she's 13. But, that's a hard one to swallow. But, I don't trust her capacity to make a major decision yet. Has she proven to make the decision? Sure. But there is still that capability in her, just like in myself, and almost 35 years old. If one bad definite thought can lead to something else. What? It does not take much. Go to chapter 10, real quick. Go to chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 8. Oops, chapter 8. 
says this. It says, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. My word. That's a large number, but honestly, that number right there probably is still in contrast to the number of the day. Oh, yeah. Because there are so much of it going on. It's not taught in churches anymore. As a matter of fact, there are some churches where he was encouraged. He's encouraged. Seven. Just write these down. I'll give these to you real quick. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness, let it not be once named among you as saints. That's paraphrasing the, uh, the verse. In verse 20, chapter number 4, verse 3, it says, For this the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. <clears throat> fornication is a sin. Yeah. And it is a serious sin that threatens the health and the testimony of the church and the people of God. So if you become aware that a Christian brother or sister in Christ is involved in something like fornication, that as a Christian, as a member of that particular church, you are commanded to begin that process of church discipline. Amen. Go to the person and call them to repent. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Is it fun? No. Listen, as a pastor, and uh, it's going on nine years. It's not been fun to deal with certain things in the ministry. I have great hair in my beard because of it. Mm -hmm. It's not that fun to deal with some of those things. But if it's not caught and dealt with from the beginning, you know, it will, it will go to the church yeah. and begin to do damage to what we do in our testimony to the individual. Yeah. Does anybody have any further questions in the last four years? <laughs> Uh, I, I love the carpenter. We've been going through some things. Uh, we'll move it, and I 
I went and got the box, and he had given me things about five of the boys. He had created a little group within the school, he called them our charities, which is simply a witness. And he had given us all a little New Testament, the other Bible, that we learned that to each one of us, not one person that came out of the One, two days a month, we would all meet with him in his office, and we would go out to lunch and go out. Not on doors for the memories, the things you know that uh, other other preachers have invested in my life. I really do is my, I really appreciate all that they have. Amen. Brother Carpenter is one of them. So pray for him, pray for his family. His surgery is the seventh of the morning, and he's going to have the, how many? Wow. He's going to have the bowel replaced. So you be in prayer for him. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? I'm going to say this only because it directly involves me and a few other men in our church. <coughs> it's getting warmer. Yeah. So that means it means the two today. Two will be able to come up. Uh, Brother Scott's got a bike, I've got a bike, the other hand's got a bike. And, uh, pray for safety on the road. Oh, yeah. For those that, that uh, yeah. are going to ride. Uh, we have continued to encourage for Bill and Hannah. We're trying to get that accident settled. Uh, the car is still not settled. And so the beast spread mm -hmm. that they'll, they'll expedite that, prop, that process. Um, she still has to pay out a car. She's not driving. Go around. It's just being in front of her. Anybody else? All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed in the Lord's Prayer. Good to see everybody tonight. Turn around for another. Very good. I'm going to be here tonight. Give a call in the name of Jesus. Let's be dismissed. Don't forget, I do need to bring this up. The 19th is when we can talk about doing a <clears throat> uh, egg filling for Easter eggs on the 23rd of Easter egg hunt. We're going to do that. We're going to back that up today to Monday, correct? Monday the 18th. They have scheduled a school event for my kids, and they just now let us know. And the 19th is also election day. And so my wife will be able to be here. Mm. Uh, I know Miss Debbie is normally always here, works the election every year. And so I want to give them the opportunity to still serve. Mm. So we're going to back that up today to Monday night about 6 o'clock. All right? We'll order pizza. <laughs> and we're going to some fellowship filled eggs. If you do have eggs or fillers, just set them back there on the table. Just past the ladies' restroom. There's a real skinny uh, table. Just set them back. All right? So, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Uh, this weekend is the couple of three of the road that, uh, that uh, I'll talk to. And um, I'm looking forward to a good time. Uh, Brother Jeremiah Metzinger, he's a pastor in Illinois, I think, is where he's at. Uh, Illinois or Iowa, I think. No, I'm sorry, he's Kansas. He's Kansas, I'm sorry. But uh, fantastic preacher, and I'm looking forward to it. Others, uh, from other churches, and we've got a uh, uh, small group in our church as well. And so, as we in prayer, we'll be leaving uh, right in the morning. So, let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. First, Steve, would you dismiss us, please? Father, we just uh, appreciate everything you've done for us, Father. We're thankful for the church here, Father. And Father, I pray that uh, we will keep everything in order. We try our best to serve you as best we can. And, uh, we need you, Father. And, and, uh, we need the Word of God and we need each other, Father. And just help us keep on keeping on. Bless all the missionaries all over the world. Bless Israel. Bless, uh, Father, the sick and afflicted. Our uh, prayer requests, Father. We have so many that uh, have some problems. And, and uh, just pray that we'll keep praying for them. Um, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs>